Who has the best Sibelius Violin Concerto performance? Well, it's hard to say, but there are definitely quite a few versions out there. And it's no surprise why people love this concerto so much because of all the vivid imagery and the amazing emotions it brings each time it's performed. Now, in today's video, we're going to be diving in and examining some of my fellow colleagues' performances of this piece and highlight what each one brings to the stage. Let's begin. All right, so we're gonna start with Joshua Bell's performance of the Sibelius. Mmm, that's really nice. It's really atmospheric. Already the iconic cough. So you can tell that he's really like uh, strategic about the use of his vibrato. He doesn't vibrate like at the beginning and then he increases it. That's really cool. I want to listen to my favorite part. It's called the second theme. It's this uh, beautiful, amazing. You know, you'll hear it, you'll hear it, okay. Somehow, I really loved how he did the beginning, but somehow this section, I wished it was like just a little bit more into the string. You know, it's one thing for have like, okay, gentle snowflakes be like, But then when you have this section that's like You know, you're meant to be like, ah, there's pain, there's joy, there's everything. There's a lot of emotions, but I can tell that his interpretation of it is more beauty. There's a lot of beauty in his playing, but I always, I, I just wish there was a little bit more, you know? A little bit more spice. <laughs> oh my gosh, this comment, what? This performance literally disgusted me on a physical level. Oh, this is a mean comment. Most of the comments are good, but like, gosh, you know, I've gotten comments like this. I don't know, maybe not quite like this. Hopefully not quite like this. I don't remember because I've erased it from my memory. Comments like this always make me really sad because it's one person's opinion or maybe a few people, but it's not the majority. I mean, you see like how many people have watched and loved this video. Yeah, almost a million people. And it only takes like one or maybe a few people to like bring it down, which is really upsetting. Yeah, there's another comment here that's, it is exactly that, say us. Granted, I'm not, never was, and never will be at the level of Joshua Bell, but too many people nowadays take their personal preferences and opinions as a means to feel superior to others. I completely agree with that. I mean, you can critique somebody, but there's no reason to critique them and bring them down at the same time. I mean, what do you get out of that? Just like feeling morally superior? That's what really bothers me. These sorts of criticisms that appear on the internet, these like wild things that happen. And this is a classic example. Even if you are as good as Joshua Bell, one of the best violinists in the world, it doesn't make you immune to being attacked by random strangers on the internet. Ridiculous. And at the end of the Day, I feel like people just really want to you know, share music. They don't even necessarily have to perform, right? So the only way around that is to literally have a space, right? Where everyone like understands that there is this giant sign of like, okay, this is all work in progress, right? And everyone can come together and like practice, share music, do all everything. So if that sounds appealing to you, then you should definitely check out Tonic. It's something I've been working on for the past two years, exactly with this kind of stuff in mind, where people can come together. Everyone understands that we're, we're, this isn't a performance, but you still get to share music and enjoy it. And so, yeah. Definitely give it a try. Uh, I've left the link for you in my description below. Hope to see you sharing music. All right, moving on. So we have Sarah Chang. Mm. You can definitely hear it's a little more hot-blooded in the opening. Wow, there's a lot of free use of bow there. It's creating this amazing energy in the sound, but it's still controlled. Even in that, that beautiful phrase, that first phrase that we hear, you have this, this steady buildup. And I think that there's multiple aspects of building, right? You've got, of course, the volume, also articulation. You can notice that when, when Sarah has the... 
Like she starts to turn on that articulation, which is basically like musical enunciation. And so there's that articulation, sound, just a uh, more connecting between the notes. And that's really important. So most people think about notes individually, but then when you think about it together in a phrase, then you have this sweep. And that's something that you can use to build and, and use to your advantage. I'm gonna check out the second theme. Immediately here, there's definitely more passion. There's definitely more like articulation. I think that's needed for this section here. Another thing is, I've noticed that like, for those with a discerning ear, you'll notice that she's like slightly ahead of the beat, but that creates a feeling of recklessness, a reckless like kind of emotion, especially when used in the context of kind of like an actor being like, then their character is reckless. Like here, oh, it's just da ta 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 da, da, da. There's a feeling of true freedom that we, we hear as a listener. And then slowly dying down here, right? Becoming like more contained. That's really great use of rhythm in a way that can drive, can like go forward, be held back, can be used to help like portray, help carry that emotional message. Yeah, this is really one of the best recordings I've heard. All right, we have uh, Hilary Hahn playing Sibelius. I wonder how she plays it. Interesting. I'm gonna pause there because first of all, usually everyone starts this concerto up bow, ta da ta. And but Hillary does the opposite, which is fine. Another thing I want to point out is that there's more pausing between the notes here. That's what's happening. I think what she's doing is more spoken. For, for this particular section though, it's coming off like a little bit stuck for me. I'm gonna just continue listening. Yeah, see how she's like more squeezing out the individual notes. Even in the slides, you'll notice the rhythm as well, the phrasing. Yeah, it's like syrupy, right? There's like kind of this thick syrup in her playing that's as opposed to kind of like a more kind of airy sound. Right, with like a lot of this breathiness. That's definitely not her style there. But then this section. Yeah, it's so strong, I love that. Interesting. There, I would have felt that the music wanted to kind of push, but instead, Hillary almost holds back. And that's an interesting choice. Let's listen to the second theme as well. I think that that's a great comparison here. thought that there would be more emotion into this. You can notice that she's she's not carried away by the music. You can see that she even smiles for a moment at the conductor there and it's just like acknowledging it's like, oh yeah, this is I'm having a good time, which is not what I think is the music, but you know, this is again, personal preference. I'm starting to understand Hillary's playing. It is very built at speed, if that makes sense. So things that sound fast, so to be super clear at its like peak, the peak of like what the violin can produce. Let's listen to the end, the, the coda. Oh. 
First of all, I was correct. My assumptions were correct. And do you see that look that she gave to the conductor? It was just like, hey, they're too loud. And he immediately puts out his hand. Let's watch that again. She's like, okay, what's, up, what's going on there? You see that? That's so cool. Wow. Here, where the speed, most violinists would probably be unclear. Like, this is where Hillary is like, reign supreme. There's definitely a lot of clarity. And that that earlier, the stretched out part is now compressed and it is like perfect. There is everything that needs to be there is there. Yeah, this is really interesting to see. Again, you get like three very, very different interpretations of a piece that is like beloved by all. So let's move on. Oh, our next one, our last one, Maxime Bengrov, also a favorite. And let's listen to how he approaches the Sibelius. It also starts down by A very different style, right? A very different approach. Much more bow use. Not quite as much as Joshua Bell or Sarah Chang, but definitely more than Hillary. And almost like a, a reaching, like kind of like, oh, like they're reaching for the peak. And that gives that like aura. The, there's where there's like more of a feeling of, oh, you're you're surrounded by this energy. So that's something that immediately I hear. And he's still somehow maintaining a calm expression in the beginning. So let's let's see how it continues. Not, use of, not using much vibrato. Mm, starting to squeeze out the sound here. Mm, use more bow and more pressure. Very nice, yeah. Right there in this passage. You know, some soloists decide they want to continue because, you know, remember the previous phrase was. Some soloists decide they want to continue that kind of. That's usually how I do it. Here, Maxime sort of does like a. A reset and then. which is really interesting too. I should try that in my next concert. I want to listen to how he plays the second theme. Wow, a lot faster, a lot more flowing. Wow, he does it all in one bow. Wow. He used up all the bow, so he does this quick retake. There, that's a, a unique technique. Oh, I love that. I love how he's like emphasizing every single da 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 da. You know, most people do. and then emphasize again on the downbeat. Instead, he's like. That will give you that kind of intensity, especially in the concert, yeah. I love the energy. It just takes you with the music. Um, so nerding out on music is definitely one of my favorite things to do. Now, hopefully this video helps you uh, identify all these cool and amazing emotional things that these musicians are doing and have spent so much time practicing on stage and bringing to the stage and the, and the music. So now you know it's not about who has the best performance or the best version, but rather a personal preference. That being said, personal preferences, I think, are just like people. And you might have a particular type of person or a style of performing that you prefer right now, but why limit yourself to only one style, right? If you truly love music, you would do your best to identify, learn, and accept more different versions. So with that being said, definitely listen to more music, go out there and explore. And if you'd like to see me review other concertos like the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto, check out this other video I made, and I hope to see you practicing on tonic. See you in the next video. Bye!